Uh, circular motion and normal forces. I want to talk about roller coasters because that's a good time. So you know that if you go on a roller coaster, you feel a different uh, force on your butt when you're at the top of a ride versus at the bottom of the ride. And when you're on a hill, it's one thing, but when it's on a, in a corkscrew or in a loop, it's quite another thing. So you sometimes find yourself in the cart down here. There's a little person having a good time. Um, and sometimes you find yourself up here, and here's a, another little person having a good time, hopefully not puking on the other little person. Anyway, um, so if you're at the top of this ride, we'll call it position one. And when you're at the bottom of this ride, we'll call it position two. And I don't want to talk about the roller coaster cart, I want to talk about the person in the cart. Um, there's going to be somebody that knows about roller coasters that's going to tell me, but Mr. Killens, uh, roller coaster loops aren't actually circular, they're actually clothoid loops. And I'll say, be quiet, you know too much. Uh, we're going <laughs> to we're going to assume that they're circular for the purposes of this, and we're going to make another dangerous assumption, uh, which ignores conservation of energy. Yes, I know. But when we get to conservation of energy, you won't make these assumptions anymore. We're going to assume that the speed at the top of the roller coaster and at the bottom of the roller coaster is the same, which is a, a dirty assumption for conservation of energy purposes. But it makes this a little bit of a cleaner problem. So we're going to say that at the top and the bottom both. 100 meters per second. And we're going to say that this person, mass of the person, is equal to, and we're going to make this person a little bit uh, more substantial this time, 141.5 kilograms. That's bigger than the average. And we're going to make the radius of this roller coaster loop, loop it's a huge roller coaster loop, by the way, 37.0 meters. That's 74 meter tall loop. That's awesome. It's 37 meter tall. And you're going at 100 meters per second. That's awesome. So we're going to have a lot of fun on this roller coaster, OK? 100 meters per second. I want to remind you that FC is equal to MV squared over R. And there's two things that we want to look at here. We want to find, maybe I'll just write it here, find the normal force. on the person at the top and bottom. Okay, and what we mean by that is find the pressure on their butt at the top and at the bottom. That's what the normal force is. It's that contact force between the bottom of the person or the, the surface where the person touches the roller coaster. And in this case, your bottom, your physical bottom, your butt. Okay. So the first thing that I always like to do is find the centripetal force when we do a problem like this, if you have the information, which we've done already in, in other problems, but we'll just play it out. Fc equals mv squared over r, because that's the information you've been, you've been given. That would be a good formula to start with. Or 100 meters per second. Oh, I did that out of order. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. 100 meters per second squared times 141.5 kilograms divided by... 37.0 meters. Did you get that ready? It is huge. Two four is good. We'll, we'll stop with the four. Uh, 38,243.24 newtons. Thank you, Naz. Um, and we might as well, as we've done before, find the FG since we know this person's mass. And I, I can't quite do this one in my head. So 141.5 kilograms is the mass times acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. 1,388.115. Okay, I'm going to go with 1, 2. Just keep the same decimal places. By 1, 2 newtons. Because it's way beyond the number of sig figs we need anyway. All right, so we've got our FC and we've got our FG. I want to draw a free body diagram here. So I want to focus on position one's free body diagram first. And at position one, we've thought through one of these before, so I think we should we could probably jump straight to the free body diagram this time. We'll try it. Uh, what are the downward forces on this thing? Nas? FC and Yeah. F normal is actually down this time. I thought I might trip you up, Nas. Can anybody tell me why the normal force is down this time? 
Other than Naz, <laughs> Aaron. Yeah, the surface is on the top. The person's on the bottom this time. It's pushing uh, down on your bottom because your bottom is up. Okay. So this is equal to F C because those are the only forces acting on this person in the vertical. And so F C is equal to F normal plus F G. And if we're looking for the normal force, we can rearrange that to get F C minus F G. And subbing in our values, because we've already calculated them, uh, we could write this as, out as F normal equals MV squared over R minus mass times acceleration due to gravity, but we've already calculated it. So 38,243.24 newtons minus 1,388.12 newtons. And there's something I forgot about before I wrote this down. What did I forget to consider? Yeah, the reference frame. Oh man, well I hope it doesn't make too much of a difference this time. I'm gonna call down negative again. I'm gonna, oh sorry, I'm gonna call down positive. I'm gonna call up negative. So let's see, FC, when you're at the top, can you see that FC is down? And when you're at the bottom, FC is up, because the center is above you. So I put FC as a positive, and at the top it is a positive. So I don't feel too bad about that. Minus FG, and FG is down, so FG would be positive. So minus a positive. So this time it works out. So that's not a big deal. I'll pretend that I'm surprised. Okay, so 38,243.24 minus 1,388.12. Yeah? Did I get it? Okay. Oh, you added the 5 in there. You kept it more accurate. Fine, I'll put the 5 back over here on the FG then. Oh, it was 115? Okay. Is that how it works out? Okay, good. Okay, anyway. Oh, so this should be 115 as well? Is that what you're saying? Alright, I'll stop fiddling with that. Anyway, so we've got our, our normal force for this first scenario being with three sig figs, 3.69 times 10 to the power of 4. Oops. Newtons. That would be the normal force at the top. Let's do the normal force at the bottom. Are you all ready to lay down some truth? Pure. Okay, good. So at the bottom, we've got position two. And at the bottom, we've got the normal force pointing upwards and the FG pointing downwards. Because now you're sitting upright and, and uh, something's pushing up on your bottom the way it normally would if you're just sitting uh, in your desk as you are in class is equal to FC, the normal force in the circular, for the circular motion. And so we could say FC again is equal to F normal plus FG. And something that some people get upset about is if you look at the equation we did previously and the equation we've got now, can you see the equations are exactly the same but the answers are different? I want to highlight it one more time. Why will the answers be different? Yeah, the directions of the forces are different. So even though the formula ends up being the same, the directions of the formula, the forces are different. The reference frames make some values be negative that wouldn't have been negative otherwise, right, in the first scenario. All right, so going back to what we're, we're doing right now. Uh, we want to get F normal all by itself. Fc minus Fg. And then again, subbing in our values. Now, centripetal force will be upwards because we're in the bottom position. So as we sub in our Fc value, must make sure that it's negative. I'm going to run out of space. No problem. Minus FG, and FG is still downwards, and down is still positive. So we're going to say minus positive 1,388.115. And did somebody get it already? Oh, Alex got it. Okay, so Ali has been keeping more decimal places than the rest of us. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to end up eliminating them all when we go to sig figs anyway. Uh, which equals negative 
9, 6 times 10 to the power of 4 newtons. Okay, and so we end up getting two values that are, are pretty different, even though it's all the same digits, just the way it works out with the rounding, 3.96 versus 3.69. That's huge though. I mean, that's a difference of, of what is that, like 3,000, 3,300? Or no, the other way around, 2,700. Anyway, it's off by quite a lot. There's a big difference in the forces. And it makes sense, I, I think, that it, it would be different. Um, if you wanted to do an experiment that sort of played with this sort of thing, you could try doing it with water. And probably a lot of people have done it with water. Have you ever taken a bucket of water and swung it around vertically over your head? And you know that it gets lighter when it's at the top, but what you might not know is that the water feels a different amount of pressure on its bottom, right? If you do it with a rock, you can imagine it a little bit better. Put a rock in a bucket and swing it vertically over top of your head. And you could probably figure that the, the surface force between the rock and the bottom of the bucket when it's above your head is going to be diminished, just like it is here for somebody on a roller coaster ride. And what you don't want is for the force between the rock and the bottom of the bucket to become zero. Because what might happen then? The rock might fall out, uh, out on your head. So I want to actually talk about what that might mean in terms of... Uh, in terms of this roller coaster ride. So I want that to be a, a part B for us here, okay? So we're actually gonna keep on with this roller coaster ride. I wanna finish this off with part B. So that part A was to find the normal forces at the top and the bottom. Part B, how fast should the coaster go so that the rider, oopsie, rider feels no pressure on their bottom when they're at the top. That's the question. I hope that you understand what I mean by that. So we're, we're trying to figure out how we can make the normal force become zero. What we set up to this point is that the free body diagram equation doesn't seem to vary. So I want to just write out the free body diagram equation right off the bat. I want to say, look, Fc is equal to Fn plus Fg. And what I want to know is how fast this roller coaster is going to have to go when the normal force is equal to zero. So let's just make it equal to zero. No problem. So really what we're saying is I want to know how fast this roller coaster has to go so that the Fc is equal to the Fg. And I, I know how to do that. I can say mv squared over r is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. Well, this is actually kind of sweet. Can you see that there's a math on mass on both sides of the equal sign? I think I'm just going to cross out the mass. In other words, I think I'm going to divide both sides by m. And if I do that, mass doesn't become a variable anymore. It's not a variable in my problem. I can say that v squared over r is equal to acceleration due to gravity. Or, if I isolate for the speed, I'll get v squared is equal to ag times r, or square rooting both sides, I get v is equal to the square root of ag times r. So if I know the radius for my circular loop, my vertical cir circular loop on my roller coaster, I can actually cook it, or a, a roller coaster engineer could cook it so that the roller coaster is going at just the right speed when they get to the top of the loop, so that Nobody in the car, because notice, it's not mass dependent. Nobody in the car, regardless of their mass, would feel any pressure on their bum, and everybody would get a little thrill. Can you, can you picture what I'm saying there? You get, everybody gets to the top of this, this loop, and they're like, whoa, -ho 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 -ho! I can't even feel anything on my bum. It's amazing. And that's the kind of excitement you want when you go on a roller coaster, okay? So th this would be the equation that would unlock that joy. You got that?